Welcome back to Worldwide Watch. The first international flight has left to Suwanabumi Airport for Sydney and the first passenger flight landed at Bangkok. And Thailand's airlinks to the outside world are gradually recovering from the week-long shutdown. Xu Jiaying reports. The long ordeal is over for many of the stranded passengers. The first international departing flight in a week left Bangkok for Sydney on Wednesday. Kind of glad to get home, yeah. First plane to Australia, so happy. Other Thai Airways flights were destined for New Delhi, Tokyo, Frankfurt, Seoul and Copenhagen. Earlier, the chairman of the airports of Thailand said that the international airport will resume operations on Friday. But even if the airport gets back to normal quickly, the long-term damage to the facility's reputation and Thailand's tourism economy may be harder to repair. Also on Wednesday, leaders of the ousted government named Deputy Prime Minister Chawarat Chander Rakula as caretaker Prime Minister. Members of the three parties who were not banned from politics are expected to form new parties that will form the basis of a new alliance. The coalition will then have to pick a new prime minister within 30 days. Xu Jiaying, CCTV. Tensions remain high in the West Bank city of Hebron as Jewish settlers and Palestinians clash with Israeli security forces. Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas is demanding Israel rein in the settlers, while the Israeli government says more forces can be sent in if needed. Zhang Wei has more. Reports say Israeli forces are preparing to evict Jewish settlers from a disputed building. Thirteen families have been living there for a year and a half. Settlers threw rocks at the Israeli police, who returned fire with stone grenades. The settlers have vowed to resist an Israeli court order that they leave the building they call Peace House. Settlers insist the building was purchased legally from a Palestinian, but the seller has denied doing so. The Palestinian president has called on the Israeli government to stop the violence in Hebron. The Israeli government should understand that it is their duty to stop these gangs from attacking the Palestinians. They should take the responsibility to end this or they will be responsible for these attacks. Israeli security officials say they have the manpower to do so. But if it will be needed to bring uh, more troops, in order to decrease violence in Hebron, we shall do it. Hebron is a home to approximately 650 Jewish settlers who live in fortified enclaves guarded by Israeli troops in the heart of a city of 180,000 Palestinians. Tensions have risen in the past week with the arrival of hundreds of supporters of the settlers who have come to the enclave to try to prevent the evacuation. Zhang Rui, CCTV. NATO foreign ministers have affirmed support for U.S. plans for a missile shield in Europe, despite Russia's strong opposition. At their meeting in Brussels on Wednesday, the minister said the planned missile defenses in Poland and the Czech Republic will make a substantial contribution to protecting allies from the threat of long-range ballistic missiles, and all 26 NATO members signed the statement backing the deployment plans. Russia has vehemently opposed the deployment and threatened to respond by placing short-range missiles on its border with Poland. A European Union flotilla will begin anti-piracy operations off the coast of Somalia next week. The EU foreign policy chief Javier Solana made the announcement on Wednesday. He says the EU warships will arrive on Monday and the handover with the NATO force will take place on December the 15th. Zhang Wei has more. The six warships and three maritime reconnaissance aircraft will replace the NATO naval force in the region. Officials say France, Greece, Germany and Britain will provide ships for the initial contingent and France and Italy will provide patrol aircraft. The contingents will be rotated every three months and at least four vessels will remain on station at all times. The task force will be the EU's first naval operation. It will have the same duties as the NATO mission, including escorting cargo vessels, protecting merchant ships and deterring pirate attacks. 
and you can be sure that uh, it's going to be a, a robust uh, mission with the objective to uh, accompany some of the, some of the uh, ships that may cross the region, in particular those uh, from the United Nations, but other uh, vulnerable ships, and deter and protect. Uh, therefore, I think it's going to be a useful operation to try to bring to that part of the sea uh, more security, which uh, is very badly needed. Wild look up. Meanwhile, NATO foreign ministers say they will also consider the possibility no of deploying a follow-up anti-piracy mission to assist the EU ships. You, NATO Secretary General Yap de Hoog Sheffer says the alliance military authorities are already discussing the possibility of a follow-up mission. He says no decision has been made, but looking ahead, there is much work to be done. The NATO ministers have agreed to ask the UN Security Council to clarify the legal issues involved. Under the current UN mandate, the international fleet operating off the Horn of Africa has not been able to board ships seized by the pirates in order to free their hostages. Zhang Rui, CCTV. Representatives from more than 100 countries have begun to sign a treaty to ban the use of cluster bombs. Norway, which began the initiative 18 months ago, is hosting the ceremony in its capital Oslo. The treaty will come into force six months after 30 of these states ratify the pact. Norway was the first nation to sign on, followed by Laos and Lebanon. The treaty bans members from using, stockpiling, producing or transferring cluster weapons. A cluster bombs are small explosives which are designed to cover a large area in a short period of time. They are particularly dangerous to civilians and especially children, long after periods of conflict. Norway's Prime Minister Jan Stoltenberg says the treaty will make the world a safer and better place to live. This is Worldwide Watch coming up next. The WHO responds to a worsening cholera epidemic in Zimbabwe as patients seeking treatment flock to neighboring South Africa. And UK scientists work on medical gadgets with the potential to revolutionize global health care. Flying higher with dreams. Sharing growth with you. CTV Golden Bridge International Communications Company Limited. Thousand Island Lake. The ideal place to relax. Hangzhou. Much more to see in Inner Mongolia. More fun. More opportunities. Newer city every day. It is here, my dreamland. Ewu, China. Island Lake, the ideal place to relax. Hangzhou. Much more to see in Inner Mongolia. <laughs> 